Introduction to Linux, a beginner's guide. Hi everyone, my name is Ali Ibrahim. I am a member of JobSkillShare.com. Inspired by Danish Hatter, I decided to teach a course that primarily will focus on how I use Linux at work in real life. The distribution of Linux that I use at work is called Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5. The example that we will see will be based on Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5. As we go on, and if you guys have any question regarding the lecture, please feel free to email me at ami underscore computers at live.com. First, a little bit about myself. Um, I am a senior ETL quality assurance engineer at j and which is Johnson & Johnson. Most of you wonder what is ETL. Basically, ETL stands for Extract, Transform, and Load. Let me give an example of a work that I do. What I really do is take data from different sources or databases or flat files and convert or transform them into usable business format. The term usable format here means I closely stay in touch with the business application owner or stakeholders to understand and fulfill their business needs. Let's say my company has three databases in three different locations, USA, Australia, and Pakistan. Let's say the database one is in USA that stores the customer name and the price of an item. Let's say it stores like a thousands and thousands of, you know, records related to customer names and prices. The database 2 that is sitting in Australia stores the quantity of the item and the customer names. And the database 3 that is sitting in Pakistan stores item number or let's say the name of the customers and the item number. We see that we can link these three databases because customer name is common in each database meaning customer name is common as a common column in each database so let's say um, my manager will come to me and say Ali could you please pull the customer name item number and the price is less than hundred dollar and quantities from each database and load it into and load them into our SharePoint thank you first thing I'm going to need of course there are like precondition like I have to have read only access to all the databases with proper credential and read write access to the SharePoint where I can load the data now I gotta get to work so what I do is I extract the data from three different databases and transform them on the request like based on the request that my manager made like once I'm sure that the data is transformed as per the business need I also have to make sure that I meet certain data validation rules for example I need to make sure that the data uh, is like you know perfect you know there's no missing columns or rows or anything like that so I will load the data into the SharePoint once I'm fully convinced that the data is integrity of the data is perfect so why SharePoint basically that was my target I have to load it into a target so easy job so how I got here well just like everyone else I started from the bottom in general to be successful ETL engineer a person must have in-depth knowledge of RDBMS tools like Oracle databases, Teradata, Sybase, SQL Server, DB2. I guess the more you know, the better. You know, you are at work. So what I used for this job was actually Oracle database and Teradata and you need to have experience with data transformation tools there are so many um, like um, 
Informatica, Abinicio, there are SQL Server integration services, statistical analytical services, and data stage. But what I use is Informatica and Abinicio. So basically, the company decide, you know, which one they want us to use, and you need to have experience with data reporting tool, and uh, there are also many what which I use extensively is is Cognos. Uh, there are others like MicroStrategy, Business Object, Crystal Report, SQL Server reporting services, and many more. And uh, defect tracking tools. You have to have experience with defect defect tracking tools, like you know which I use at work extensively is HP Quality Center. There are many others like Bugzilla, Team, Foundation Server, Rational, ClearQuest from IBM, and Jira. But I use extensively HP Quality Center, and um, you need to have experience with automation testing tool which I use is QTP which is stand for quick test professional there are many others like selenium visual studio team server silk and many others I uh, load and stress testing tools you have to know load runner uh, this is a tool that, that will help you test that let's say you have a 500 users accessing your database at the same time you can use load runner to automate a process and see if your database can handle and you can see the response time and um, it's, it's a very cool tool it you know it teach you you can get a lot of uh, uh, cool results out of it you know depending on what your target is let's say you want to get a throughput time like you want to see the trans like transaction time and many other things you know now forget all that man let's talk about Unix oh Linux of course to understand Linux we have to understand Unix because of course they are not the same thing but you will see how they are related in some way so again to understand Linux it is better to Dick Dan in 1969. That is when Bell Labs developers started working on a new operating system named Unix. We'll talk more about it later in the next video. So, moving on to the course agenda, um, video one was an intro video which uh, you're watching right now, and uh, in video two, um, I will talk about history of how Linux came into existence. I will say this over and over that it is very important to understand the history because to me it gave a lots of technical confidence at work. Like for example, most of the time at work employees talk about non-technical stuff. So with some good historical knowledge you can definitely be on the top of your game. So history is important. And in third video, we will talk about structure and components. Uh, you know, there are certain properties that every Linux distribution share a concept like kernel, shell, com commands and utilities, organizations of files and directories. We'll talk more about this in lecture three, or you can say video three. In video four, we will talk about um, a Linux distribution. Distribution is a big, big, big term. There are over 250 distribution or type of Linux operating system. If you want, you can come up with your own. And in the final video, which is going to be the fifth video, I will show you the graphic user interface of Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5. Uh, basically, I will show you how it looks like. Uh, on the front end which is UI and I will also show you how to work with it in the back end so work, in, work with it in the back end you have to have some knowledge of the commands you know and I'm gonna show you some commands that I use it regularly to be more effective at work I know I cannot share real data with you guys but it's very 
every company policy that their data stays confidential. So I will try to come up with some mockups to set you know examples for better understanding. So you know, stay tuned. Thank you so much. I hope this was convincing enough. <laughs>